Hi, it's Chantelle from Fiverific here. How's your week been going? Did you cast on any new projects to up your whip count? Did you finish any? I haven't. Well, not yet anyway. If you want to follow along with my progress for the Boo Knits Happy Together project, I'm posting photos into the Ravelry group and Facebook pages and I've put the links down below. Today I'd like to show you how to use the Margicraft mini hand combs. I have some single row combs here. Ta-da! Also, I really do like to use a double row combs for finer, softer fibers like merino and angora and mohair. Normally I do use it for mohair. But for the, for the wools that aren't quite as fine, the single row are just as good. We're establishing I'm a bit of a control freak. So I like to hold both my combs. I don't like to attach one to a table. But the complete comb system does come with a comb block, a table clamp and a diz. If you think you'd prefer to clamp it down. I have a couple of different fibers here. I have some lovely purple mohair ready for us to comb up. And I also have some gorgeous Wensleydale, which is a bit dirty. So I've sorted it into little piles of what I'm going to use. We just have to remember that we just use a few locks at a time. We don't want to overload our combs. Um, if you put too much on there, you'll end up making so much more work for yourself. Also, I don't want to read about any Wolverine style injuries in the comments below. So you need to just make sure that when you're combing, You've got one, one hand rigid like this and the other hand is pushing away or into your face, not my face. So we've got to push them away from each other. So honestly, this is a job that I would normally do out the back or on the patio or outside. Opening up the locks creates um, a lot of dust, drops a lot of vegetable matter. I've got like a little towel down here. I've been told that some people actually like to comb their dirty locks before they wash them so that they're actually a bit more open and they can just swish them in the water and they clean a lot faster. Now I haven't tried this but I'm going to give it a go with some of this Wensleydale that I've got here. Now the other thing is generally, honestly, I probably wouldn't comb Wensleydale um, to spin it in a worsted manner like what you'll get using these hand combs. You'll always get a worsted preparation of your fibre which means that all the individual strands of or like the, each and every single strand of your wool will be pointing in the one direction. So it shouldn't halo too much. It should become quite slinky yarn and it's quite dense as well. It'll be really, really beautiful. You'll have like, it's perfect for shawls and things like that. Well, I think it's perfect for shawls. Everyone's got their own opinions and that's the advantage of us all spinning our own wool is that we get to make wool that we personally like. That's the other thing to remember is that this is how I hand comb. Now, there, I don't believe there's any right and wrong ways to do things. I don't believe in craft police, and I'm not gonna be the craft police today, except for the whole, don't stab yourself with your hand combs, because it really hurts, and you don't want blood in your fiber. So the first things that we have to do is to load our fiber. So I'm gonna start with this little bit of, um, with the purple mohair. Like it looks quite fluffy now, because I, I, I've split it all into its little locks already. So I always put my cut tip. So you've got your, your, your tip from the animal and then the cut tip, the cut tip, I feed onto the combs. Oops, I've missed. So cut tips onto the combs. So much for being organized. Here we go, there we go, that one was good. Now, the other thing is you don't want to overload your combs. Now, like you've got these massive long tines and you think, oh, I can fit heaps on there. If you fill this up, once it opens up, you'll have nowhere to go. It'll just pounce off the top. You'll end up with an absolute mess. I do not recommend going more than sort of a third and probably safer to go less than more. So if you have a look here, that's like, that's what I've got on there. So we have to make sure that we're just catching the tips. We just push it away from ourselves, all the time away. Now, see how that had to pull quite firmly because you don't want that coming back at you at that kind of um, speed. Okay, so we've got a little bit there, which is 
quite long so I'm actually just going to steal that and plop it on. Now there's a little bit of nups and knots and stuff, we'll move that to the side. We don't want to keep anything like that. I am going to do a couple of passes on this. I generally like to do two passes at least um, just because I find that it opens it up more. Now you just, what I didn't just, I just automatically did it, I realised I never actually said what I was doing which is defeats the purpose of this video really doesn't it so I'll, show, I'll do a third pass and I'll show you what I just did so we've got more nips and more shortcuts don't want any of that that doesn't go to waste here that goes out to my chickens so what I'm doing sorry I just realized I was going to talk through it again is I actually pull the fiber up so that it's not all stuck at the bottom because when it leaves it stuck at the bottom it makes it very difficult to comb so we've got some icky bits on the end here. We'll just try and pull through those. So see how much mohair there is here now? Like after those like five or six little locks that we had and it's turned into this massive pile of beautiful fluff. Now I'm just trying to get this last little bit off here. So we'll just drop that over there. And again, this I can still see quite a lot of vegetable matter in here so I want to try and get that out so I'm going to give this another pass but I am going to open it out and make sure but see look at this it's like a big thing of fairy floss now so there's some veggie matter in the bottom here so I'm going to scoop that out we just keep going I can see it all falling on my little table here And you just keep going until you're happy with the prep you have. So if you like it to be completely open and clean, which is what I personally prefer, I'm going to go to this kind of effort. Sorry, I've just found a little piece. Sometimes it's just easy just to pull that out and save that for the next run. Okay, so we're just going to pull this up and keep going like this. Okay, so... Pull that off for the chickens. Now I would not say that this is a perfect run, this is a bit of a quickie run, but it's, I probably put too much on this one. So what I'm going to do now is draft it off. Okay, so this one probably had about three to four run throughs. Now generally I try to keep it to two, but I overfilled it and it became this massive big full thing. So I needed to do another pass so that I could get it all cleaned up to how I wanted it. Now this is very full now, it's, it's like only just staying on the combs here. We're going to decide which way we're going to draft it. So you can either use a diz, which is like a little disc with um, some holes in it, or you can use the pinching sand beard method. Um, now today I'm just going to use the pinching sand beard method because it's a lot quicker. The diz is good if you want to make sure you've got a consistent sort of diameter of fibre that's coming through. Again, I like to control things, so when I'm spinning this, I'll really keep an eye on it. But if you really um, use a diz and get a really nice consistent roving, you'll be able to spin that so fast because you won't need to pre-draft. You'll basically just be able to feed it straight into the spinning monster. And, um, and just get your yarn really fast. So what we're going to do here, I'll stop talking, and we'll use the pinching Santa method to get this off. So what we do is we create a little tip at the end. And we pull this like this, and you draft it like you're drafting fibre. So you don't ever want to pull more than the staple length of your fibre, otherwise it'll come apart. And we, we do want one big long piece. So keep pulling now I'm noticing that's getting a bit tough so I just need to wiggle this around on here a bit and we just keep pulling and we just keep drafting and drafting here we go that's getting a bit easier now and we keep drafting now I've got a couple of little bits in there that I would go through with actual tweezers and pull them out because I wouldn't want them in my final spinning. And, I'm, and you can really see it because you can see through it like that big lump there, right there. I would pull that out. Okay, and then what we do 
is that's it so there's still a fair bit but it's all quite short so I would keep that now this would not go to the chickens this it's all clean mostly and this would end up in um, a separate bag that I keep for when I'm making bats so not everything goes to the chickens some things goes to other things and then what we do is we catch our little end and we wrap it around our hand very carefully it's like soft like a cloud and catch that on our fingers pull this over and we've made a little nest you'll end up with beautiful beautiful yarn from that nest so then what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a quick go with just a little bit of this Wensleydale so I've only got a few locks here I've learnt from my mistake so cut end on the on the comb cut ends to load up okay that's enough so pull that up a little bit so that it's not sitting right at the bottom and then just catch the ends and pop it out and make sure you're flicking the yarn or fibre I should say all the way back so turn it pull it up or you can push it up from the back if you like I tend to just pull it up and again catch the ends now because this one's dirty and I'm not going to spin it I'm going to wash it first um, I, I, I'm look personally not a fan of spinning raw fleece and I, more power to the people that are but I'm not but this has really just opened up those locks beautiful and ready to for really simple washing I literally hold them like this and swish them in the water and then grab the other end and swish that and I think that would be all they would need then they would just be ready for beautiful beautiful spinning so if you're like me you will absolutely fall in love with this spinning preparation it's it is a lot of work but you end up with the most gorgeous yarn but it is also very very addictive now you have been warned because I spend so much time combing it's ridiculous these hand combs can be used as mini hackles so you can use these to blend your existing clean fibers on you can put merino and mohair and all sorts of things on there sparkles and whatever and again just keep it under the third put on what you need and then blend it and you can blend it once just to give it a quick blend or you can blend it two or three times to completely mix everything through how the combs work is that they capture the longest fiber lengths first so if you've got all different lengths of fiber so you've got a nice big long silk staple and then you've got a medium length merino staple and then a bit of angora tufts thrown in as well I mean that would make an absolutely gorgeous yarn but the thing is what will happen is you'll end up with a uh, the roving as, you, as you're dizzing it off you'll end up with a big pile of silk and then a big pile of merino and then right at the end you'll have your little tufts of angora they won't blend as well you will have gone through all that work to blend it but as you're dizzing it off the lengths will be the, the determining factor of how they are blended so what I recommend is using fibers of similar lengths so if you've got really long staple silk cut it in half I hate saying that but absolutely cut it in half now if you want the different chunks of of silk the merino the whatever then do it that way you know that's if that's what you want to do then do it but if you want more of an even blend make sure they're similar lengths so this has might be my my brief overview of how to use the Margicraft mini hand combs do you have any tools laying about that you don't use what are they why don't you use them I know I was very nervous about using the hand combs at first because they were daunting they were spiky and scary thank you for liking and commenting and subscribing it's now time for you to go and fill your universe with fiber fun off you go see you next week